I'm so angry at you. I'm so angry at you. Well, I'm angry at you. How come you're not on camera? I don't know. I'm very disoriented right now. But I'm... Hold on. Oh, there you go. Oh, hi. Oh. Oh. What's going on, guys? Anyway, we're really angry at each other. And, uh, well... Hold on. This light is really bright. There we go. We're really... Hey, what's this up here? Oh, my God! Ah! We're, we're caught up! Ah! Hi. It's me, Patrick. Oh, my God! <laughs> Just kidding. Hi. It's me, Patrick. Can you tell? I'm a little tired. It's a little late on a, on a Friday right now. And I'm here to talk to you about conflict. Ah! Well, Chuck Norris style on you right now. You know that Chuck Norris's tears can cure cancer, but he never cries. Anyway, I'm here to talk about conflict, the conflict chapter, and I'm going to talk about two different concepts. So I'm going to divide the video into two halves. Half number one is right now. The first half I'm going to talk about is actually power. Power is one of the parts of conflict that has a really close relationship to conflict. There are five types of power that I want to discuss with you right now. The first type is called reward power. Reward power is exactly what it sounds like. It's the power you have when somebody gives you a reward. The second type of power is coercive power. It's the type of power you have when somebody can punish you or take something away from you. Reward and coercive power are two sides of the same coin. Go figure. The third type of power I want to discuss with you is called expert power. Expert power is the power somebody has because they know a lot about something, either through training, experience, or education. And so expert power gives people power over other people. Next, we have legitimate power. Legitimate power is the power you have because of the position you have. So, for example, somebody who is the chief of police has legitimate power because they have been elected or chosen by people to be the chief of police. And they have that legitimate power because of that position they have. The final kind of power is called referent power. Sounds like reverent, but it's referent. R-E-F-E-R-E-N-T. Referent power is the power you have when somebody admires or likes you. If somebody admires or likes you, do you have a lot of power? Because that's the kind of power you can't just manufacture. All right, so those are the five types of power, and they interact in many, many different ways. How many of these powers do you think I have? I can tell you right now, I have four of the five powers with each and every one of my students. Sometimes I have all five. Which one do you think I don't have? Well, look below because that's one of the questions. Okay, next. I want to talk about the five conflict management strategies the book outlines. And uh, for this, I really just want you to know what these strategies are. I don't uh, really need you to know, you know, a high level of this, low level of this. That's not really interesting to me. What's more interesting is what are these strategies and whether they're good or not good. So the first strategy I'm going to go over is called accommodating. Accommodating is when you just give in to somebody else. I'm just going to let you win. I'm just going to, uh, you know, uh, give you whatever it is that you want in order to uh, have this conflict to be over. Similar to accommodating, but a little different is called avoiding. Avoiding is exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to stay away from the conflict altogether. I don't want to be involved. The third type of conflict management is called competition. Competition is kind of what it sounds like. I'm going to compete with you. I see conflict as, some, as, a, as something that needs to be won, and I want to win against you. The fourth type is called compromise. A compromise is very, very, very simple. I want something, you want something. We both give something up so that we can come to a conclusion where we both get something. It's a lose-lose situation. You give something up, I give something up. We both lose something in order to gain something else. And the final one is called collaboration. Collaboration is probably the trickiest because it's a win-win situation. It's when two parties with opposing needs work together to come up with some solution that allows both sides to win. 
Now let me give you an example that will cover all of these. Say that there's a brother and a sister who both want a car. Their parents say, we're going to give you $1,000 to get this car. Accommodating would be with one member of the a brother and sister duo saying, okay, I'm just going to give you all of the money and you can go buy your car and that's fine. The avoiding would be both of them don't want to talk about it, so they never come to a resolution. Competing would be they both are butting heads trying to get all of the money for themselves. Compromising would be deciding to buy a car together and then dividing up how much time each of them gets with the car. The reason that's a compromise is because they both want their own car. They both want to drive all the time, but they're willing to give up time in order to get the car. That's a compromise. It's a lose-lose to gain something. The final type is collaboration. With collaboration, they brainstorm ways to get a car that will both allow them what they want. They both want a $1,000 car. So what they decide to do is to work with their parents. They say, okay, we're going to split this $1,000 between us, $500 each. And if you will loan us another $1,000, we will pay you back within a year the $1,000 so that we can each buy our own $1,000 car. As you can see, it's a win-win situation. They both get what they want. So those are the five types of, of conflict management. Again, we have accommodating, we have avoiding, we have competing, we have compromising, and we have, a com uh, and, uh, we have collaboration. Oh. Anyway, I hope that Blizzard Theater was very effective for you. Have a great day, everybody. Bye!